we're a HIPAA compliant communication platform that focuses on workflow and care improvement through clinical coordination. And we do that using modern technologies and mobile technology as well. We work with quite a large number of varied organizations across the country. We have over 300 customers to date and we impact 80,000 end users. But before I really start in on today's topic, I just want to share with you my personal experience in healthcare communications. When my daughter was born uh, ten, uh, five years ago, there was uh, quite a complication with, uh, with, with uh, the delivery of my child. Anyway, I ended up spending eight weeks in the hospital uh, with my wife who was admitted with a post surgical infection. When my daughter was born prematurely, uh, my background was 16 years in telecommunications and software. And it was really shocking and stunning to me to see uh, how communications were going on in the healthcare environment. So here we are, this is the year that the iPad was uh, introduced, the first iPad. And the physicians were carrying around pagers, and a lot of the uh, Q&A between the, the clinicians, the nurse doctors, was requesting a, a callback. And if the nurse wasn't at their workstation, when the physician called back, they'd miss that chance to communicate. So simple tasks, such as the fetching of, uh, you know, is it okay to fetch a glass of water, would take astronomically longer amount of time than, than it had to. And that was where our company was uh, founded, was on the premise of tackling that, that challenge and that issue. So for those of you that don't have a lot of familiarity and background with secure texting, the state of the art before secure texting is SMS text messaging. So you'll have physicians, uh, other clinicians, sending SMS text messages across uh, carrier networks. Uh, those aren't necessarily encrypted. There's no control of the organization for where those messages can get sent. There's no policy or control. So I have in my diagram here uh, a, a text message traversing between two of the large carriers. And those messages are actually stored in the carrier database as well they're being delivered. So obviously there's a huge risk of a HIPAA violation if you're texting and there's patient health information in those messages. There's also no control over lost or stolen devices. So about five years ago, an industry was sort of born, which is let's, let's secure that channel through using apps on smartphones. So let's emulate what, it, what it's like to send a text message by doing it with apps that are installed on the smartphone devices. And in doing so, you can add a lot of value. So you can put retention policy on the data, messages can self-destruct, but you can, you can also have guaranteed delivery. So you can see when messages have been read. So it really does enhance the speed of care. There's lots of uh, information out there on the benefits of secure texting. We have some of our own data points. We did a survey with a hospital that uses our software, 600 bed hospital. They calculated the equivalent time savings for nurse staff of using our solution was like putting 40 nurses back on the floor over a 12 hour shift, uh, which is massive. And with a, respect to physicians, we have calculated uh, savings of up to over an hour a day, almost an hour and a half a day uh, in saving on communication. But I'm really here to talk about the challenges that we've seen over the past five years getting these solutions into the market and how we've been able to learn from them and our, and our clients have as well. So one of the main concerns that we deal with is that the reliability issues, and I'm gonna to speak to that in more detail. Low user adoption, so getting everybody on the same platform and moving forward, that tends to be a huge issue. As does lack of user inclusion, there's a lot of point solutions out there that were targeted, for example, towards physicians, others targeted towards uh, nurse. Lack of structure and policy with respect to how and when messages should be sent is a, is a huge issue. A very common problem, everyone's up on the same texting platform and it's 3 a.m. and a nurse goes to the patient chart, sees a physician's name, gets on the texting app and sends a message. Physician's not on, not on call, not in the hospital, not even on shift. Uh, we've seen projects end over those types of incidents, so that, that's a big deal. And then lastly, uh, lack of integration. Without being integrated into IT and clinical systems, and we're gonna go in depth on that today, you have a point solution. 
that doesn't really solve any problems. All you're doing if you just have a point texting solution is you're securing a child that was, that was insecure previously and it doesn't really fit the bill and that's what we've discovered the past five years. So some of the typical reliability concerns that we've encountered uh, over the years is concerns over network coverage, data issues, uh, poor battery life. What happens when the physician's phone is on a guest Wi-Fi network and it thinks it's on a data network, but it's actually not on a network. Uh, these are all huge issues, and we've seen this tend to want to put all two-way communication onto a texting platform as soon as it's available. There's a huge safety issue there, especially if uh, those applications uh, don't have protocols within them. If the phone's uh, batteries die, or if there's no data connections, it's a big issue. So there's a lot of uh, ways to solve that. We solve that in software by putting policy on the messages. So for example, if a targeted uh, user does not receive a message within a certain period of time, we can escalate that up uh, through, the, through the team and through the organization. Our system, and we're quite unique this way, in that if we can't reach uh, an end user on, a, on their uh, mobile device, their smartphone, we try alternate contact methods, including calling and, and delivering an actual message over a phone line. So we have these uh, stages and steps of redundancy. And of course, if we can't reach a user, there's escalation policy uh, involved. Now, despite all of this, uh, with no network coverage, a device can't really, uh, can't really do anything or communicate to the outside world. So all of our clients have really invested heavily in their corporate Wi-Fi networks over the past five years. When we started, it used to be that you could be in a stairwell or the basement of the hospital and there's no coverage, but those 900 megahertz pages are, are getting, the messages are always getting to the device. That's not so much the case now. Uh, there's better Wi-Fi, but there's also better 4G. The carriers have been repeating their signals into the basements of, of hospitals. So there's been a lot of progress there. Adoption issues uh, are rampant. <laughs> we see uh, a lot of sentiment, such as such such as these ones here. I, I want to keep my pager. I'm I'm wed to a process where my pager is embedded in so much workflow. I have 20 clinical systems that actually integrate with my pager device. It's a big issue. I just don't have the time for this. I'm busy. I can't install an app. I can't learn up on a new app. And. I'm not using my BYOD, my personal phone, for, for work. I'm not going to actually use it unless there's a stipend involved or uh, I don't want uh, to use my personal phone for work function. So the way, the way those problems can be solved, uh, there's multiple ways, but we have found that providing an amazing user experience is obviously really important. If you can provide more value than just texting, and this is one example, we have a, a patient-centric messaging workflow, so essentially the EMR can actually share who the care team is with our application and allow me to communicate more accurately based, based on uh, integration with the EMR. But also the ability to have functions that, are, that the physicians expect, such as when I make the call back from my personal phone, I don't want my personal phone number exposed, so a solution that can actually mask or hide the callback number of the, of the physician. But also, uh, uh, how you do the rollout is, is uh, paramount. If you go too slowly, interest wanes and users fall off the texting platform. If you go too quickly, then you have critical messages coming through your system, but people aren't picking them up. So the way that the system is deployed is, is really important. The inclusion issue is, is a, a big one that we're seeing today uh, with the fragmentation of the secure uh, communication market. So you've got companies that focus only on physician communication, and then you've got nurse call systems. They're very different roles and very different needs. So having a single solution that can actually accommodate all the stakeholders in the care community is very important. So as an example of solving inclusion issues, having a system that does integrate with your existing infrastructure around nurse call and alarming. And also as importantly, having a system that can connect all your devices as a, as a uh, single communication hub. 
so secure text apps by nature, the point solutions don't take uh, integration into consideration. But integration is actually key. We don't want to layer on one more communication technology in a, in a hospital that already has seven different uh, systems deployed because it doesn't solve any issues. One of the large adoption uh, issues that we see is, as I described, where a physician will get a message at 3 a.m., get very frustrated because they're not on call, they're not supposed to be covering. Messages that are incomplete or partial. So a new a new patient admission comes in over the over the texting platform, but it's missing key information. These are very common problems that, that, that we see. So by putting structure into the messaging, by requiring certain fields, for example, to be filled out based on the type of message, is this a new admission? Is it a patient handoff? Is it a critical lab result? And actually structuring that communication, we found, really enhances the, the workflow very quickly. Because now instead of playing back and forth uh, tag over what the result of that communication can be, it can be a much more streamlined process. And we find policy, uh, policy is obviously a, a, a broad term, but the on-call schedules are really important. So there's about eight different leading physician call scheduling platforms. There's nurse uh, platforms such as Kronos. And what we found is that by integrating with all of them to, to help in making our routing decisions, that assures that the wrong message won't go to the wrong provider at the wrong time. But policy is much more than just schedules. So uh, a good example of that would be, you go to the texting app, you might look up who's on call for a different group and send that message. But what happens if you if you go to the texting app because you saw a patient assignment on the, on the treatment team in Epic, so you just decide uh, to message a, a physician. A good solution will actually identify that use case and say, well, actually that physician is not currently in the hospital, so reroute that message and don't allow it to go to that physician. And we, we accomplished that with, with uh, a part of our solution that we call our routing engine. The Joint Commission has uh, ruled on this more than one time, which is, no, it's not acceptable to text orders. But this is actually a, a message that we, we actually have sampled a message uh, where here, here's uh, an order occurring regarding a restart of heparin. By the Joint Commission's standard, that message shouldn't be happening. This is happening regardless of whether you're doing secure texting or you're using uh, an open texting solution. The intensity to text orders is going to be there. Well, how do you solve that problem? It's a big problem. If you structure the messages and you actually route those into the EMR based on who the patient is, that allows you to actually be compliant with the Joint Commission's finding on texting orders. So if it's orchestrated properly, your texting platform can actually be used to convey useful information from doctor to nurse, such as texting and order. Excuse me, the desert is very dry. <laughs> So connecting all systems is a key part of our strategy as a company, and we've done uh, over 30 different vendor integrations with our platform. So secure texting as a point solution can be very useful, but unless it's integrated with the other critical functions within uh, the hospital or IT environment and group systems, communications won't be improved. We have a lot of resources as an organization on this topic. A uh, number of case studies, RFP templates, uh, as well as uh, case studies where we've implemented some of these more advanced communications methods around a secure texting platform. So if you're interested, please uh, feel free to visit our website. I'm gonna break quite early now and pause for questions. Uh, we have about five minutes left. So thank you very much for coming uh, to listen to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.